Hello and welcome to Robin Minds. My name is Shea. We'll all be your host today. And it's, I'm sure it's still safe for me to say happy Eid celebrations to all my Muslim brethren out there. We're a unified front. We're supposed to be a unified country and we shall always stand together. And it's a good thing to say that the things that to, to render our voices to the things that are happening in the country. And I'm here speaking about the spate of killings that have been taking, that have been taking place in the southern Kaduna which is something that we are not meant to be proud or happy about. It is very appalling, the things that are happening south of Kaduna. And today on the show, we have Joel Amadi, who, was, who is a celebrity who spoke up about the things that, have, that are happening in southern Kaduna and is also a victim as regards the loss of his father's life during this space of killings that have happened over the past couple of weeks. Welcome, Mr. Joel. Thank you so much. How are you doing? You. Our, con our deep condolences as regards your yeah. loss. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Mr. Joel, yeah. from your, what exactly is happening? What exactly is happening in Southern Kaduna is that uh, they are killing people in Southern Kaduna communities. You know, and uh, from my own record, it's been going on uh, since last year um, that the killing has increased to a level where um, people are no longer safe, you know, to um, live in that community anymore. You know what I'm saying? So it's been going on for over uh, 30, 40 years, you know, but because I can't go into that history right now, I can only go into the one I can, you know, um, um, speak about or talk about. Um, that's what I'm saying from last year, you know. So it's just the issue of killing people, making them, you know, um, leave their, their, their comfort home, which is their community, to other places where they are no longer comfortable. They yeah, have been pushed out by this, e exactly. by this callous behavior. Yeah. So with, with the state of insecurity in the country now, and, well, will I say lack of efficiency with the security forces, as people would say, do you think the northern rule, the rulers, the local rulers, play a vital role in ensuring the security in their various regions? Uh, when you say local rulers, I don't think that's their duty. You know, they are there to just represent and speak on behalf of uh, the people of the community. You know, but they are not the ones who can authoritatively tell the army or the police men to do this or do that. You know, I mean, we have a governor. That's why we have a governor who is the chief of staff, you know. Um, and of course, of course, it's expected of him you know, as the executive governor of the state to ensure uh, maximum effective security on ground, you know, to protect the lives of every um, indigenous or every um, life in Kaduna State. Okay. You know, so I think it's, it's particularly directed to the governor of Kaduna State. Okay, so this thing has been going on for years, like you stated, oh, yes, for decades. It has. Yes, it And has. It's, as, it's as if it's only when there's a peak in this thing that we hear about it. Yeah. Um, you see, it's so sad that I got, I received a call from one of my cousins in our community and he said um, the deputy governor and one of the commissioners visited the, visited my community where the incident happened um, about two days ago. And they said people are trying to just exaggerate or, you know, trying to escalate the whole situation. That is not as bad as it seems. It's even, it's even worse, you know, it's worse. So um, um, I was surprised to hear that from my cousin, you know, if that was actually what the deputy governor said. You know, um, the way the killings, you know, are going is, is getting to the point where there might be no single soul left in the southern community um, of Cardinal State anymore, you know. And I hope, I hope with time, the adequate uh, or necessary uh, uh, or the needful action would be taken to just make sure these people are able to stay back home and, you know, claim their lands back. Their lives exactly. all over again. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. they do. Yeah. But do you think in the wake of this insecurity, I mean, you think this insecurity is a, is a function of disconnect? Like, uh, how do I put this? Disconnect between the region and the federal government. Do you think that could be part of the reasons why this is happening? Um, the federal government, or state government of Kaduna State, I would admit, so far so good, they've taken actions that we saw, you know, actions like sending troops of army to go to 
uh, these communities, you know, station them for um, weeks, you know, days or weeks. But it's so, um, you know, uh, there's something I'm not understanding. How come these uh, killers, you know, or these Fulani hensmen, you know, uh, are so accurate on or about or as to when these soldiers are no longer, you know, on ground or in those forests to protect these lives? How come they attack after the soldiers, or rather soldiers must have left? You know, because I was told that it was two days after these soldiers left that they attacked. So who is giving them this information? What is the leakage going on, you know, in or between, you know, our, our military uh, and then these, these attackers? You know, or these killers or these bandits, they have different so, names. To a certain degree, it's almost as if there might be a... I think there's an insider or there's an informant. I don't know who, maybe from the village, maybe among the soldiers, maybe from even the government. I don't know. But I'm just saying definitely someone is feeding these people with, with so information. Don't you, so don't you think it would be good if there was a collaboration between probably the indigenous or people within the southern communities and this and security... No. Officials. Uh, yes, I think that that move has been done or made um, several times, uh, but we're not getting any positive result, you know. And then what we are just trying to, what is happening right now is there's a dispute, you know. Um, these people that are killing are trying to say, give us your land. And then the southern um, Kaduna are saying, this is our land. This was where we were born. This, were, this was where, you know, they gave birth to us. This is where we farm. This is where we feed from, we survive from. So if we are to leave this land, where are we to go to? So why don't we create an avenue for peace or dialogue where, okay, we can give you guys part of the land. But the way it is right now, this is, no, uh, this is not an issue of, you know, give us part of your land. This is an issue of you guys should just leave Southern Kaduna for us and then let's take over. So this problem in southern Kaduna and some other communities around Kaduna is something that has been recurring yeah. over time. I mean, how can we understand, or better still, can you help us understand this problem? And probably maybe from there we can be able to find a solution. Um, you know, I, I watched a couple of uh, interviews. His Excellency Erufai, the governor of Kaduna State, where he admitted that... Um, the Fulanese want to settle in that land, you know. Uh, but the Southern Kadunas are refusing to accommodate them. Well, I don't know what part of Southern Kaduna he's talking about. But where I'm from, you know, we have Fulanese, you know, uh, amongst us. You know, these people, they trade. They have one local uh, trade they call Fura de Nono. You know, the milk, the cow milk, and, yes. you know, and, and, and corn as well. So we are like family. I grew up with them like they were peaceful. So I don't want to believe it's those set of Fulanese that are doing these killings. You know, there are masterminds. There are, there are people being sponsored. You know, I don't know. Some said, allegations, speculations said from Mali, Guinea, this and that. But whatever was saying is there's a link that these, uh, you know, murderers are coming from. And then that link is what we need to identify. And where is uh, their entrance from? From the forest, you know? So I'm wondering if this forest is so difficult that we can, these people cannot be traced and then fished out, and then they still live in that forest, and then the government hasn't done anything about it. Well... Valid point stated there, Joel. Yeah. Thank you. And now joining us, we have Bivan Magoni on Skype. Welcome, Bivan. Thank you. Good day to you. Yeah. So, uh, Bivan, as we all know, corruption, every, almost everything is almost linked to corruption one way or the other. Quick question to you. This problem, corruption, do you think it has allowed the problem of insecurity fester the more? As it, is that the, is that, do you think that's the reason why it has become rather harsh these days? Well, uh, does this have anything to do with corruption in the first place? Like, if you're talking about corruption. Now, um, 
I, I, I listened to the question you asked him about how long has this been going on? I will take your memory lane back to 1897 to 1902 during the Quassel Raids, where the British said uh, just just a thousand people from Atiap land were killed when the king, when the Atiap land was invaded. Um, if in 1897 um, to 1902 they said just a thousand people, you can imagine the level of havoc that has been wreaked on our people. Then in 1903, the British finally invaded the Atiap land, and there was no struggle. The Atiap people submitted themselves to the British. Now in 19 10, the people of Atiap and uh, Jew um, land, actually, um, they revolted because of the policy of taxation that, that has been imposed on them. And then in 1942, the Jew people revolted. In 1946, just shortly after the, First World, uh, the Second World War, the Atiap people and the Jew people again, they revolted. In 1956, there about there was another crisis, but that didn't lead to bloodbath. Now, from then till I think 1987, 1988, there about there was another crisis before the Zamkat of 1992 crisis. Now, if you are linking this corruption in the sense that justice has not really been meted out on the people who are carrying out these attacks in southern Kaduna, yes, I agree with you in that aspect. But this, um, I don't, I don't really think it has anything to do with corruption. It has to do with the fact that when something like this happens, you hear the government say, we're setting up a committee to look into this. We're setting this up. We're doing this. And in the long run, no one is being arrested. No one is being persecuted. Now, we are the victims, but they make it look like our people are the aggressors. Is Are these attacks, are they happening in a tap land or where are they happening? Now, as I'm talking to you, I watched your TV some days back, and then I saw pictures of people who were arrested in Southern Kaduna. I will categorically tell you that those people arrested are not other people, but the people that came out to defend themselves. By the man looking at them and what they put on, those are Southern Kaduna youth. So after every attack, it is our people that they end up arresting. And that's the problem. Now, that's where the corruption comes in. What happens to um, air composition with, uh, with, with um, Stephen Kefas? And he said, they were looking for him and they went over to Port Harcourt and they were able to trace him down there and then they arrested him and then they locked him for 162 days. Then why is it so difficult that not even a single person amongst these people has been arrested? No, no one has said that. We're yet to hear any story. We're yet to hear anything about that. So that is where the corruption comes in, where there's no justice. If that is tied to corruption, then that's where um, corruption has it really, really eaten deep, and we need justice and, and, and in the long run. That's all we need. If if people have been um, arrested and then um, and then um, taken to court, and then justice is served, and, and the pe people of Southern Kaduna see, look, these are the people that carried out the, the attacks in Southern Kaduna, and they've been arrested, and something is done, then we won't be here. At least we'll feel okay. But worst of all. The government is even taking sides already. There's no banditry. Southern Kaduna is a very peaceful zone. If we go there midnight, you, 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 you can move anywhere to any part of Southern Kaduna. We don't have banditry. We don't have bandits. Who said so? In the news, you are a television station. How many times have you had kidnapping, this, that? I mean, you have petitives everywhere. But apart from that, banditry in Southern Kaduna, no, we don't have that. Okay, so uh, Bivan. How would you advise the government, being that you're an indigenous of Southern Kaduna, you know the terrain, you know the environment, how would you advise the, the Nigerian government to have much more effective intervention methods so that these kind of things could be prevented in time? And, you know, also solutions as regards, because you spoke about uh, uh, where they get to arrest most of the Southern Kaduna indigenous as well. What kind of, what, what solutions do you think can be put in place for all these to work out in the right way so that people are not, there's not a case of mistaken identity for people that are trying to defend themselves. And also there's a speedy intervention by the military and security forces to help save lives in the Southern Kaduna. Basically, um, like I said earlier, justice. Let there be justice. Find out who are those responsible for these attacks. Apart from that, the first thing the government need to do is to accept that there's something wrong somewhere. 
Now, you, 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 they have to accept that, okay, there's injustice meted out, on, meted out on the Southern Kaduna people. I had a conversation with someone on the radio days back, and he said, these are people that used to be our slaves. That's, that's the problem here. They keep on saying Southern Kaduna people were their slaves. We were never anybody's slaves. Our people were never anybody's slaves. During the slave trade, um, Southern, Southern Kaduna people were, were taken, and in, in, in turn, we also fought back and had our own slaves. Now, I had a conversation with a Sokapu um, PRO, and he said to me, he was able to trace back his roots and then found out that some members of his family were not actually from Atiap land. They were actually slaves that were brought in. But our people accumulated these people. Um, uh, w w how do I put it? Yes, they accepted these people and made them part of the, assimilated these people and made them a part of us. It is difficult for you to now go and say, these are the people that were once slaves. These are people, I mean, these are some of the problems. Now, you make us look like we are second-class citizens. That narrative has been playing over and over and over, and that is what is pushing these people to believe that, look, these people were our slaves. We need to take over what belongs to them. So let the government accept that there's injustice done to the Southern Katuna people. If they accept that, okay. and then they start finding out who are those people that carried out the attacks. Now, imagine the Sharia crisis of 2000. Did you ever hear that anyone was arrested and then um, uh, prosecuted? No. I am yet to hear anything. Now, thousands of people will be killed and nothing will be done. Why would you expect these things to happen over and over and over again? Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much, Bivan. We really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So, Mr. Joel, yeah. what do you think, or what do you think, our President, what do you think should be the solutions to these things as regards intervention and identification of the Southern Kaduna youth? Because they need protection wow. from both being attacked and being arrested. Um, the first step to take to, to stop this killing is to stop going against, you know, a particular community or stop making it look like you're being one-sided, you know, either as a governor or as a ruler, you know, or as a head. Stop making it look like you're being one-sided. Now, our governor in Cardinal State, Erufai, said last year, you know, he paid some of this... Uh, Bandits, I think that was the word he used, or full enhancement, but he's on YouTube, you know, on Channels TV interview where he said um, he admitted that he paid them money to stop the killings. For me, I feel like these people have just been reinvested. Like, you have just given them money, you know, to, to reinvest in, 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 into, in, in, the into the business that they are doing. They might come out and say, I have repented, you know, and then go behind the scene and use that huge um, sum of amount to invest in the younger ones who are coming up. I mean, I have a video on my phone where a kid of about five years old, you know, cocked a gun, you know, and shot that gun. That was an, that was an AK-47, a kid of five years old. So imagine when that kid uh, gets to uh, 10, what he will be doing, you know, with lives. You know, so I think the government has a lot to play uh, uh, um, we are still looking up to them. We are still. Okay. This is not about the political issue. It's about yeah. the government that is doing the right thing. You understand? Doing the, do right the right thing. Right not just way. coming. Not just coming out to make speech or speeches and say, "Oh, we have we have ensured to send security." But instead, they actually. You do understand? What Let they the have actions. Do. Don't remove those soldiers. Like I said earlier. Now it was two days after you asked these soldier troops to leave okay. the village, the community that they attacked. So why did they leave? Where where did they leave to? To the barracks or where did they leave to? So we need to make sure that. You're not just, we're tired of spoken words. We need actions. We need to be yeah. sure these people are yeah. not more than the Nigerian Thank army. Thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you. And I guess, again, we sympathize with you. We Thank Our you. deep condolences as regards your loss of your, you. of your dad. Thank you. We hopefully, this message will get to the right mm -hmm. minds and the right ears and executives that will be able to implement the right, right laws that will prevent people from suffering your loss Thank all you. over again. Thank you. And our heart goes out to everyone out in Southern Kaduna that has lost people, their lives, their property, and everything. We, are, we deeply con con well, we, are, we, uh, sim we sympathize with every single one of you and hope that everything will be rectified as time goes on. Thank you very much. And you, you do hold on. Stay tuned. And we'll be back right after this break. Robin Mike.